Welcome back to the Matt Greer Music Channel. I am your host, Matt, and today we are talking about this guy, the Novation Circuit Rhythm, a sampler-based groove box based on the popular and successful Novation Circuit line. Uh, and so, yeah, today we're just going to do a review, kind of a demonstration on some of the functions, and I'm going to give you my thoughts on pros, cons, uh, so you can make an informed decision if this is for you. Not real formal, I'm just going to kind of do it in the way that I do it uh, because for some reason some of you out there like to hear uh, my opinion on these devices. So uh, let's jump in first off with the physical build. Um, it's probably close to about 12 by 12 inches square, about a foot square. I don't know what that is um, in, in metric. I only know in freedom units, sorry about that, but uh, yeah, probably, probably about the size of, of a square foot, maybe a little smaller. Uh, it's pretty thin, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, not near as thick as the previous model. Um, something else that's cool about it is that uh, it has a built-in battery that charges over USB-C. It's also got this micro SD card, three full-size MIDI DINs, a sync out for modular or pocket operators, Volcas, that kind of thing. Here's your stereo pair of outputs. Here's your headphone output, and there's where you sample uh, into the device. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and pause and point out this guy right here. This is the small sort of headphone jack. Um, minor pet peeve of mine is using these on on you know, music equipment. Uh, I don't know, they had room for these three standard MIDI DINs, which is great, um, but I feel like they could have made room for a full-size headphone socket. Just a, just a personal pet peeve of mine. But uh, anyway, moving on. So the, the build is pretty nice. Uh, it, I do think it's plastic, but it's, it feels very solid. Um, and it's got this really nice kind of satiny finish on it. The, the sheen is really, I don't know, it just it feels nice on your fingers. Uh, <clears throat> the knobs are good. They really, they're well affixed. They don't feel wobbly. They go straight flush into the surface of the unit. Uh, the pads feel good. Uh, the velocity on the pads is actually pretty nice to work with, and I'll, I'll try to show you that here in a little bit. But overall, the physical build, um, I, I do I do really like it. So it's it's a nice shape. It's nice to use. It's it's something that you you do want to actually put your hands on, which is great. Um, so moving on to the sampling, which is pretty much the basis of this whole unit. It is a sampler. Sampling is really easy. You just hit the sample button. All right, so that's audio coming out of my OPZ into the, uh, the Novation rhythm here. Um, I've got a volume attenuator there. I can also attenuate the volume by minus 12 just by hitting that button. Uh, to me, that's almost I'm yet to find a situation where I need that. Um, so I leave it at zero and then use this to kind of fine tune how loud I want the sample to come in. Uh, I will mention that before I updated the firmware, um, this function did not exist. And anything I sampled seemed to almost always play back at half the volume I sampled it in at. I was quite annoyed by that. Um, Googled it, couldn't find a real solution. So if you're having issue with low volume, make sure you're on the newest firmware. All right. so. Um, Let's go ahead and just uh, pick a slot. Uh, you probably can't really tell. Maybe you can. This is slightly brighter than the other pads. Uh, that means that's the one I'm going to sample to. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at my screen here. Yeah, it's actually easier to tell on my 
my camera right now than it is in real light. Um, but anyway, we're going to record here. I'm going to hit record. Uh, it's waiting at the moment. So it's, it's listening for incoming audio. Let's go. It's saving that. And there it is. And see, it's playing back louder than I recorded it in. Um, I think it auto normalizes everything. So you may have that. That's a reasonable volume. It's just, it's a little tricky. Sometimes what it plays back after you sample is not exactly what you expect. But anyway, moving on. So sampling is very easy. Um, can be done to a click track. So this is something that's unique. I also don't see a lot of people talking about this. So let's get out of sample mode. Let's go to tempo. I'm gonna turn up the click here. Uh, let's find a new project. 90 is your, your uh, baseline BPM, that's fine. All right, so uh, why do we care about that? Well, uh, let's say that you've got a beat, you know the tempo that you want it to be, um, and you want to record a multiple bar phrase into the sampler that matches the tempo for the project that you're working on. Oddly enough, not all samplers can do that. Um, a lot of them can, but there's plenty that can't, um, in particular, uh, Roland SPs. Now again, I, I'm not talking about the Mark II. I haven't used a Mark II yet, but uh, the SP404SX, for instance, very popular sampler. You cannot, doesn't have a click track that you can record a sample into. Uh, some of the others do, but that's that's one thing that's worth hearing out. So what I can do now, though, is turn on that. Turn on sampling. It's waiting. It's a longer phrase, so it takes longer to save. Okay, cool. Now I can put on loop. Right, so I wanted to call that out because that's a new, a unique thing. Uh, like some samplers have it, not all of them do. Uh, but it's great that you can sample along to a click so that you know the tempo of what you're trying to sample as a phrase will match the tempo of the project that you're working on. You can sample external audio along with audio that's already tied to your sequencer. So uh, let's pick a slot there. I'm gonna hit sample. And I'm gonna let that background riff play while I play something on top of it. So. This will take a second. That's something I'll mention. It, the processing for longer samples is um, a little slow, a little slow. It's a, a slowness that I'm not accustomed to on on brand new hardware. I'll just go ahead and I'll put it like that. Come on now. If you want to get a cup of coffee, you know, grab some lunch, that's fine. Okay, now. You get the idea. Uh, it sampled the external audio with the background that I was resampling at the same time. That's a unique trick as well. Not every device has that. Uh, again, I'm going to pick on the SP404SX a little bit. Doesn't do that. So pretty cool stuff. Again, other SPs can though, like the SP303. Um, you'll hear me reference <laughs> SPs a lot. Uh, what can it do to samples? Well, I'm going to go to a different project here. I'm going to go into the sample menu. I've got that thing playing. Can it mangle? The shorter answer is no, not really. Um, you can adjust the pitch. You can adjust where the sample starts. 
you can adjust where it ends. Um, it's got this thing called slope, which is either, if you turn it this way, it's going to put a more gradual attack on the sound. If you turn the knob to the right, it's going to kind of adjust your decay, uh, make that shorter. Uh, it'd be nice if I could adjust both, but... It sort of rises. Um, let's see, it's got distortion. That to me is probably one of the more interesting things this can do. It's got a high pass filter. Low pass. And resonance. Um, you can also do a couple things to a sample like um, you can split it up down into smaller pieces. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to pick on the same sampler here. And let's see. Sample mode. There we go. I'm going to hit slice. Choose this one. These are different degrees of slice. Uh, and I think it looks for transients to try to slice on. So I chose that. And now I'm going to go into note. And if you notice up here, um, that start function is changing based on which of these pads I pushed. So essentially, it looks like it copied that original sample, put it across four pads, and then changed the start place of each. Um, that's nice. I wish that it could also change the tune of each pad individually. Like I make this one real low and then make this one real high. But you can see, if I make this one high, it goes to that one too. So that's kind of unfortunate. I think that's sort of a missed opportunity there. Um, it can reverse, it can loop. I go into sample mode here. Uh, you can do it a one shot, a gate, a loop, a reverse. Uh, it's got a choke function, so different samples will choke each other off. Um, so that's about it though. Uh, so if you're like into something like the uh, Octatrack or granular samplers or something where like you can really take a sample and just tear it all apart and then put it back together, um, it's it's going to be a challenge on this. You might be able to get there by resampling little pizzas of things and then putting that back together in a sequence. Uh, where there's a will, there's a way, right? But um, it's going to take you some time to do it on this. So not not my first choice for really, really processing samples. Um, they're really meant to be brought in and used in a more traditional instrument fashion. Um, I will say that, uh, let's see, let's take the slice off. Can I do that? What's going on here? Put it in keyboard mode. You can play things like a keyboard. So that's pretty great. Um, the sequencer is quite easy to use. So let's just find a couple cheesy samples in the banks here. And let's just record something. So dead easy to get your samples tied to uh, a sequencer. Um, so for that part, I think it's a really, really good option. Uh, if you want something that you can just jump on real quick, start making music right away. The, the Novation circuits have always been that way, and um, I think it's probably their strongest suit, and it's, it's, it's not lost on this one as well. Um, you can get up to four patterns chained in across all eight bar or excuse me across all eight samples uh, and you can take that further it does have a song mode that they refer to as scenes and a scene can be a combination of different pattern changes 
and you can have multiple scenes chained together as well. So you can have a scene that's like your intro build up and then your verse and then your chorus and then like a bridge. And you can compose complete tracks that, you know, at a push of a button, it will just play that whole thing. Um, personally, I find it very fiddly. Um, it's, it's a unique workflow that some people might really like. To me, I don't. Uh, and this is one area where a screen would be nice where you could like kind of see some sort of linear layout of the different tracks when oh, now the hi-hat's going to come in and oh, we're going to take the bass out here. Um, and that's where things like your MPC ones and your other devices there uh, really shine. But you got to consider the cost of something like that as well. So um, yeah, let's next move on to effects. It has a couple different kinds of effects. And uh, let's see, we're going to all right, first things first, I'm going to take that take that click off. I'm going to go into the regular effects section. I'm going to pick on this one here, number two. Let's go into effects. This row here is for your reverbs. This is for your delay types. So you have two global FX sends that you can choose to send uh, any one of these eight tracks into or not uh, as much as you want. And the different types here affect what kind of reverb it is or what kind of delay. Um, this is kind of from left to right in intensity. So this would be like a, a chamber, small room, uh, large hall, and then over here is like the biggest, grandest reverb. So let's pick something in the middle. I'm going to push play. Um, yep, so you got effects there. Not my favorite effects. Uh, I find this reverb to be very echoey, very old school. Uh, so it, it's not going to give you that, uh, that really pretty ethereal Valhalla uh, or even like the reverbs that are on a lot of the electron devices where it's got that really complex algorithm and it just sounds smooth and like instant ambient. It doesn't doesn't scratch that itch for me. Um, the uh, the delays are a little more focused, I suppose you could say. Uh, so let's talk about let's go to the hi hat so we can try a different sound on it. FX. Let's choose a delay. So there's different time divisions here and some are ping-ponging back and forth in the stereo spectrum, some are not. Um, <clears throat> I like the delays though. I think there's plenty to like about the delays. Um, beyond that, there's not a lot you can do with them on the device other than choose the type. Uh, so it, there's not a lot of editing. So if I wanted to take a delay and then, you know, like I like the time division of that one and I want to tell it to ping pong there's no parameter to do that like I don't understand why I couldn't like choose that hit shift these knobs change colors and then like oh this is now blue or whatever and that's that's the time division and this is the feedback and this is the uh, stereo ping pong or whatever right it'd be nice to be able to do that on the device now there are deeper functions for the effects but you need to access it through MIDI CCs with some type of external controller or heck your, con your computer or your DAW, which to me, okay, cool. Glad it's there. Glad it's not impossible, but I didn't buy hardware to have to use a computer to get to all the functions. So hopeful that in a firmware update, they could add like a shift or combo to where you could get at those things. Um, there are several places in this device that there are deeper parameters that you can only get to through external MIDI control messages. So a, a little bit of a lost opportunity there. Um, anyway, uh, last thing I'll say around this section is there's no LFOs, um, which is a shame. And I, they didn't promise LFOs, so I'm, I'm literally complaining about something that I shouldn't be expecting. Um, but I wish it did. And there are some workarounds. So I can go, you know, to 
let's go to my kick and, and snare track here. Uh, I'm gonna first tell it to chill on that. Let's go back to kick and snare. I've got my filter. I can So I can automate the recording of these knobs and I can emulate an LFO. So like if I'm rhythmically moving, you know, the low pass filter kind of in time with the beat and I record that, that's similar to an LFO or the pitch. I can, woo, woo. Um, I know you guys love my mouth impressions of sounds on here, but uh, it's a shame that there's not a dedicated LFO somewhere. Uh, and that way I can expand my automation outside of that. Um, not really a deal breaker. Again, it wasn't promised. It's just worth mentioning because some of the competitors do have that. Performance effects. So we've got our, uh, our beat going here. Let's see. I'm going to clear that. There we go. So I pushed clear and turned that knob. It got rid of the automation I recorded. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go to mixer and then we're going to go to grid effects. Shift that turns on the grid effects. These are essentially your performance effects. Those are your beat stutter. Those are reverses. They have different time divisions on how it will reverse. This is the, um, the gate stutter. Uh, I think they call it the gator, uh, but it's the gate stutter. That's the phaser, and then uh, you've got two Two vinyl sims there. Uh, and there's two other effects that you can load from the component software called Digitize. I forget what the other one's called. I think it, no, it's a filter. It's an automated filter. Um, I don't know why they're not on here already. I don't know why we need six slots dedicated to the stutter beat. Um, or two or, or four gates. Um, and then I gotta mention, Vinyl Sim, like, this is the most cliche. It's just like, what's what are the kids doing right now? Oh, lo-fi hip-hop. Well, we got to have a Vinyl Sim. It's cool. I'm glad it's there, but can we not think outside of the box a little bit? Um, and again, I, it's, yeah, I can't have all the effects without going to components. This is hardware. Why do I have to hook up to a computer to use the full device? Anyway. That's effects. Um, we did talk a little bit about resampling, but I want to talk again about resampling with effects. Because let's say that you got some kind of piano riff and you do want to do that lo-fi thing and you want to make it really crusty uh, and you want to put that lo-fi sim on it uh, and you want to resample that so that you can use the lo-fi piano sound with really clean and crispy beats or whatever your workflow is. So let's say, um, let's uh, latch that. So I keep that on. Let's go into sample. Oops, that's not it. I've got resample on because it's this button. I'm gonna choose this spot. It's recording. Boy, it's taking a minute, huh? I still spontaneously push these buttons just like, it's like the elevator when you're waiting. If you push the button more, it, we sense that it hurries up. Uh, so that's just vinyl sim that I just recorded. So I didn't even do that, right? Let's clear that. So this time what I need to do is hit record and play at the same time. And it's gonna record to this spot. All right, now it's saving that. I can turn the play off. Now we gotta go back to this, shift back to this, turn that off, go back to where we were. 
and you can see that it recorded with that effect onto the sample. But it's kind of a fiddly workflow, you know? I mean, you've got to mute everything that you don't want to have the effect on. You've got to go in here, you've got to latch it, you've got to go into sample. Um, if it's an effect that's free running like that, you've got to time recording so that um, the threshold doesn't pick it up uh, before you actually start the music. So, yeah, little bit, a uh, little bit of a pain on that. And and I, if you notice there, that end result. Let's go back here. A little bit louder than what it was playing out of the sequencer into the resampler. So, yeah, things to be aware of. Uh, that's about it for sampling. And again, I don't want to do a full tutorial here on how to sample and make a beat and like uh, those things have have been done well already. There's already a lot of tutorials out there, but also. The beauty of this machine is it's pretty easy to figure out. Uh, I, I was able to pick this up not even not even look at the manual and start making music right away uh, again I do have experience with the circuit so some of that workflow tr you know uh, transferred but uh, that's something I notice in everyone's comments about these is that they're just easy to pick up start making music with right away they're just a simple um, well-made UI that seems to resonate with a lot of people and that's the best thing about it is that if you want to make music um, this device will get you there and it will get you there in in a hurry and it's they've always had this kind of mantra of like start something and finish something like it's all about inspiration and being able to do something quick this embodies that perfectly so yeah that's about it for my overview let's get into some final thoughts here all right so who is this thing for well i think it's for anybody who wants to make music with samples honestly it's its approach is very easy uh it gets the job done it's really no fuss it's at a great price point so i think really anybody could enjoy using it uh if you are used to more advanced features and um being able to apply lots of effects for your resampling uh, that kind of thing you might find some of the workflow to be a little fiddly a little frustrating uh, you might find not having a screen to get down into that detail of what you want to do to samples to be a little bit more difficult but where it excels is like i said is just picking it up ease of use and start making music with it right away and to that i think that they have made a very good product in a range that didn't really exist before um, what is its closest competition? I would say probably this, uh, the Electron model samples. Even though this can't sample directly into it, I think um, in terms of features, sound set, uh, this is probably the most comparable, especially in price as well. Um, this has things that the circuit can't do and vice versa. So um, that would be one I would look at if you're considering uh, getting something in this range. Um, outside of that, uh, you know, everything else is going to be more expensive, but you will get more features with those, like out of an MPC. Um, you know, again, the new SP404 Mark II, uh, and again, those cost more. Uh, if you want to look at used options, I think uh, the trusty classic SP404 SX. Um, I still think this has better effects. Uh, it certainly can't do some things like the circuit can. You can't sample to a metronome. You can't sample with resampling going on at the same time. So it loses out on a couple features there, but uh, I think for where it excels is adding effects, resampling and building beats. It also has a sequencer, not as good as the circuit, but it's it's pretty workable uh, so yeah that in used market maybe an mpc 500 you could probably find that for about the same price and um yeah i think that one would definitely give it a run for its money but yeah again i think uh you know for the cost of entry the innovation circuit rhythm is an excellent option so thank you all for watching. Those are my thoughts on this device. Uh, let me know if you have questions or comments down below and I will answer those. And uh, yeah, happy music making. Have a good day, guys. Bye.